hi everyone welcome to another video in this video i'll be talking about snapseed a wonderful application to edit your pictures on the go i'm not sure whether it's available on ios it's definitely available in the android play store i'll just go ahead and open the application you can open your picture from open photo button down here i'll just select an image and get back to you this is the picture i selected for editing to start with, on the lower left corner, you can find the histogram for this image. And there you can see that you have options for undo, redo, revert, apply last edits and so on. To start editing the picture, click on the pencil button down here. Down here you have some filters, lens blur, glamour glow and so on. You have the HDR scape also. It does a good job. You can go through these on your own. I'll just take one and show you how it's done. For example here I choose HDR scape. And you can already see that the picture is much better. In order to increase the effect you have to slide your fingers from left to right. And to decrease the effect you can slide your fingers from right to left so this is the basic thing all over snapseed i don't usually use filters i'll cancel it and get back to the main page so these are other filters you can just go through i'll be focusing more on the tools that we have here there are nine tools out of which crop and rotate are familiar to all of you. I would suggest you to do the cropping on the last step. That way you can adjust the image finely. Rotating, you can angularly rotate it or you can just rotate it as such. So I'll just leave crop and rotate to you. I'm pretty sure anyone can figure it out. The first tool is tuning the image. Go ahead and click it. You can see that there are some options. To access the options, slide your finger from bottom to top. And to come, come back to some settings, slide it back backwards. I'll hide the histogram. Brightness is to increase the overall brightness of your image. I usually don't suggest to do anything with it. Just leave it alone like that. Next up we have contrast. This increases the shadows. At the same time it gives brightness to, to the highlighted areas. You can set the contrast around, let me say, I'll just keep it at 30. Next one is saturation. Don't play with it too much. It might produce some pretty ugly pictures with too much color. Ambience can be added a little bit to increase the overall ambience of your picture. Next up is highlights, a very important tool. If you find the clouds and sky to be very bright, you can decrease the highlights just like this. You can already see that the clouds are appearing more pronounced. I think I'll keep it at 80. Next up is shadows. As you can see, the bottom portion of the picture is not well lit. So in order to compensate that, just increase the shadows. There you can see that it's getting much better. Next step is warmth. If you want the picture to feel cold, drag from right to left. If you want the picture to feel more of sunny type, drag from left to right. So this is a very good trick. Like some cameras usually shot in the cooler side and some usually shot in the warmer side. So you can compensate with that. 
here i think i'll add a bit of warmth say 4 i'll click done and wait there next step is the details button there you have two things structure and sharpening structure gives an overall more pronounced look to your picture and sharpening just sharpens the individual pixels of pixels of your picture i would suggest not to use sharpening that much if you take a picture in your smartphone because it actually adds a more more noise to the picture so i'll just leave sharpening over there and yeah structure over there i'm pretty satisfied with this i hope you have noticed that the mountains and those small trees on the downside of the mountain are more visible now when i increase the structure and it looks more appealing next up we have transform and brush options you can transform your picture in vertical vertical perspective horizontal per perspective and also under under this option there is a rotation button so what this rotation does is this you can tilt it towards the left or right if you feel that your picture is a bit skewed okay i can't find zero i'll just cancel it take that transform option again now i'll talk about vertical perspective if you increase the vertical perspective you can see that the picture is moving a bit backwards so if you feel your picture is skewed in that way you can use this option i think i'll add a negative perspective of just 10 or 9 yes and next one is horizontal perspective which does the same thing to left and right part of your picture always keep in mind that if you have important parts towards the edges of your picture i suggest you not to use this for example if i increase the horizontal perspective too much please notice on the lower left and the lower right corners so that you can see how it compensates for the perspective change on the right hand corner now you can see that something is added and it doesn't match so perfectly in this picture it's okay i think but if you have something important over there towards the edges i suggest you not to use this anyway i don't want this i'll just go back to zero five four three two one zero yeah done next up is the brush tool while using this brush you have certain options what a brush does is it goes to a particular portion and increase the exposure temperature or saturation so here i am using the saturation button i'm sorry exposure button so if i want to increase the exposure along the mountains a bit more not this much say 0.3 i'll show you what it does see that area is brightening up a little more in order to see the area you just brushed click on this eye button over here that's the area you just brushed okay i'm satisfied with this next step is temperature if you want a particular area to be more warm or to be more cold you can use this say 5 negative 5 and negative 10 i'll just increase it to 5 and i'll brush along this area to add a little more warmth also along the mountains it looks a bit odd to be honest i'll just erase it so this is how you work with brushes and you have saturation also 
if you want to increase the saturation in a particular area you just do the same since it's too bright over there i think a bit of saturation would work good done next step is selective tool if you want a particular area to be bright or to have little more saturation or contrast you can pick the area and increase the brightness you can adjust this by pinching in to reduce the size and pinching out to increase the size I'll just do one more here just click on the add button here and press again so now that's independent of the first B and B is for brightness for contrast you have C and that's for saturation so I think I, a bit more brightness here will also do some good yes that's how you use your selective tool you can do the same for contrast and saturation also i hope you notice the difference so next step is the healing tool let me find something that i want to remove i think i'll try to remove oh i'll undo that patch zoom in select using this mini box over here i want to remove that space that looks a bit odd i'll drag my fingers over here and there you go that patch will be compensated now i'll have to zoom out and yeah it's good actually that patch is gone and it looks okay you can do a much better job than this if you have patience so that's how you heal it next step is a vignette tool which is used in borders you can increase the brightness or decrease the brightness of your borders to give it a concentrated look for example in this picture i want the mountains to be the main focus of my picture so i can drag it over here and reduce the bright outer brightness don't reduce it too much because it doesn't look that good i will set it to 20 or 19 click done so this is the point where i use these things filters this looks very ugly so I'll bring down the filter strength to say 4 or 5, yes, that would be good. I'm not very satisfied with the picture but I hope you got the idea of how to do these things. And the last step I usually do is crop the image. I feel that those dark clouds over there, those rain clouds, they're a bit too much in this picture. So I'll crop some of those off. And this bush seems a bit on the lower left corner. That bush seems a bit odd, but I actually can't do much. Because if I crop this, all those beautiful mountains will be gone. And if I do this, the picture would look odd. So I'll just leave it there. Actually, I can use the heel tool to remove a bit of that bush. But I think this is okay. Click done and then up here you can see what you have done with your picture. So this is the original picture before editing and this is the final image. I hope you understood why I told this a beautiful tool to edit your images on the go. Now after you are done with everything click the save button. 
it might take some time depending on the size of the picture and the best thing about snapseed is that it doesn't reduce the size of a picture so that your pixels won't be lost and the picture will be of good quality the photo saving is complete now we are ready to go and share it on instagram or wherever you like i'll just go to the play store and find some more beautiful apps where you can edit your pictures if you have some suggestions please leave comments below i'll check those and i'll learn how to edit and i'll show you how to edit those pictures so if you like this video please click the like button and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this my instagram and twitter account are shared below please check them out also you can follow me on instagram and twitter to get updates i usually update in instagram and yeah that's it see you guys in the next one